Are you diving into developing your 3D game? Whether it's a racing game, an FPS, or something else entirely, a crucial step you'll need to tackle is adding a camera. Not to worry, by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a camera set up in your game that looks fantastic. Hey everyone, you're watching AshDev. In this tutorial, you will learn to create a smooth follow camera in Unity. Now, there are a few common methods to add a camera. The simplest way is to make the camera a child of your game object. It's easy, but if you've tried this, you probably know it's far from perfect. Second method is to write your own camera controller script. This can work to a degree, but getting it just right involves a lot of tweaks and extra coding, which might not be what you're after. Third and the best way is to use Cinemachine. It's a package created by Unity that includes a comprehensive camera controller that suits all your needs, so there's no need to write your own code. To start, just install the Cinemachine package from the Package Manager available in the Unity registry. Next, attach a Cinemachine brain component to your main camera. This component will link your main camera to all other Cinemachine elements in the scene. In Cinemachine, there's primarily one type of camera you'll use, the virtual camera. Once you create a virtual camera, your main camera will become dependent on it. Essentially, you should treat the virtual camera as your main camera. Place it and aim it as needed. The main camera will automatically adapt to use the settings of the virtual camera. Now, you'll need to set up two key properties, follow and look at. The follow transform is what your camera will track, and it will influence the camera's position as it moves to follow its target. The look at transform is what your camera will aim at, which influences the camera's rotation. Simply drag and drop the objects you want your camera to follow and aim at into these fields, and you're set. Next up, let's talk about the lens settings. We start with the field of view, which determines how much of the game world the camera can see at one time. Then, adjust the near and far clip planes to set the range within which the camera can see objects. Anything beyond these points will not be visible as it will be clipped out of view. Lastly, there's the Dutch setting, which allows you to rotate the camera for dynamic angles. We also have advanced settings where you can choose the camera mode. We'll be working with the perspective camera mode, as the other modes aren't as relevant for this tutorial. I'll dive deeper into these other modes in upcoming videos. Moving on to the body settings, which are crucial for determining how the camera follows your target. In this section, you first need to select an algorithm that dictates the camera's behavior in following the target. There are two primary types of camera behaviors in 3D games, non-interactable camera and interactable camera. The non-interactable camera simply follows the target, ensuring it remains in frame. It's straightforward and commonly used in casual and hyper-casual games. The interactable camera also responds to player inputs, making it interactive and engaging. In this tutorial, we're focusing on the non-interactable camera type, which is perfect if you just want the camera to simply follow the target without player inputs. For this setup, we'll use the transposer algorithm, which allows the camera to move in a fixed relationship with the follow target. Now, let's choose a binding mode. Best choice is the simple follow with world up mode. This mode ensures the camera follows the target's X and Z axes, while maintaining alignment with the world's up, that is Y axis. What this means is that if your target flips upside down, the camera won't turn upside down as well. It will keep a steady, upright orientation. Next, adjust the follow offset, which lets you position the camera relative to the target to get just the right angle and framing. Then, the damping settings control how quickly the camera reacts to movements of the target. A higher damping value means the camera will react more slowly, smoothing out the motion. You can control the damping on the Y and Z axes to fine-tune how the camera behaves in those specific directions. With these settings done, you'll have a basic follow camera that operates smoothly and keeps your game's visuals steady and engaging. There are other binding modes too, such as the Lock to Target mode, which are particularly useful in flying games like those involving helicopters or airplanes. With the Lock to Target mode, the camera follows the local coordinate system of the target. This means the camera remains fixed in a relative position to the target, staying in sync with its rotations. So, if the target rotates on any axis, the camera adjusts its position to preserve the same viewing angle. 
As mentioned earlier, you can set a follow offset in this mode, which allows you to place the camera at a specific position relative to the target. Additionally, there's damping for all three axes, X, Y, and Z, which controls how smoothly the camera follows the movements of the target along these axes. There's also specific damping for pitch, yaw, and roll. Yaw is the rotation around the Y axis, pitch is the rotation around the X axis, and roll is the rotation around the Z axis. Next we have Lock to Target No Roll Mode, as the name suggests. This setting allows the camera to adapt to different rotations of the target, but it won't roll along with the target. This can be particularly useful in scenarios where you want to maintain a stable horizon while still allowing for natural movement in other axes. Moving on, we have the lock to target with World Up. In this mode, the camera uses the target's local coordinate system, but keeps the up axis aligned with the World's Up. This effectively means that the camera is affected only by the yaw rotation of the target, providing a level of stability in the vertical orientation while still following the target's turning movements. Then there's lock to target on a sign. This mode is quite rigid, as the camera only adapts to the initial rotation of the target at the time of assignment and does not rotate at all afterward. It's useful when you need a fixed perspective that doesn't need to adjust or react to the target's rotations throughout the gameplay. Lastly, we discuss the World Space mode. This mode aligns the camera with the World Coordinate System, meaning it doesn't rotate at all with the target. It's predominantly used in 2D and 2.5D games where maintaining a consistent view regardless of the target's orientation is crucial. Each of these modes offers distinct advantages depending on your game's design and the specific player experience you aim to create. Next, let's dive into the aim settings, which are crucial for how the camera targets and tracks the object of interest in your game. The most commonly used algorithm here is the composer, which helps to keep the target object well framed within the camera view. In the composer settings, we deal with two specific zones, the dead zone and the soft zone. The dead zone is centered within the frame and is the area where you ideally want the target to be. When the target is within this dead zone, the camera remains static and doesn't rotate. Surrounding the dead zone is the soft zone. When the target moves into this area, the camera begins to rotate to reposition the target back into the dead zone, depending on the amount of damping applied. Beyond the soft zone, there's what could be considered a margin, an area where you don't want the target to go effectively keeping it within the camera's view. These zones can be adjusted in the settings through dead and soft zone width and height. You have the flexibility to shift both zones across the screen using the screen X and Y parameters. If you want to adjust just the soft zone, you can use the biases X and Y settings. Another advanced feature is the look ahead time, which predicts the target's future position to enhance the smoothness of camera movements. However, it's important to keep the look-ahead time not too high to prevent it from affecting camera shake animations and to maintain the natural feel of the game's cinematography. Additionally, you can smooth out the transitions with look-ahead smoothing, and if your game doesn't require vertical tracking, you can enable Ignore Y to keep the camera from calculating the target's Y position. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and learned something new. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.